There is a silent killer in Mythic Plus that is responsible for depleting thousands of keys every season. And it all starts here, with the formation of the group and how key holders form their party. There is a huge difference between good and bad comps in Mythic Plus, and if you don't have the right tools, then your chance at depleting a key skyrockets. Now on the flip side, having a well-balanced comp is almost like a cheat code and can make dungeons infinitely easier as long as you know what coverage you need for each dungeon. And today, we're going to show you how to form your groups in order to have the best chance at timing runs. Now don't worry, we're not going to gatekeep any of the off-meta specs. Instead, we're going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to make sure everyone can be included. Now to do this, we're going to start with the core essentials every group needs no matter what. Then we're going to add an accessory layer, which includes highly recommended tools that help minimize wipes. Not required, but definitely useful. And finally, we'll have an extra credit category, which include miscellaneous quality of life improvements. The higher you can build this pyramid, the stronger the group will be. So stay tuned as we give you the ultimate guide on how to form your group for Mythic Dungeons in Dragonflight Season 2. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and tab target that bell icon to be notified when we release new content. For now, let's get started. The most important part when forming any group for any dungeon is having a solid core. Here, we'll want to make sure we have four vital tools to give us coverage against repeat dungeon mechanics. Interrupts are the first tool we're looking for, and lucky for us, they're pretty easy to come by since every single class in the game, except Priest, has access to a kick. Now, with that said, we can optimize our group to have the best possible interrupt coverage. Ideally, we'll want at least two melee interrupts, and while it's not 100% necessary, we'll also want one ranged interrupt. Getting two melee kicks shouldn't be too difficult since tanks automatically provide one, and even Holy Paladins and Mistweaver Monks can add additional kick coverage for the healer side of things. Ranged interrupts are important too, but they can be less reliable overall due to their longer than average cooldown, with the exception of Wind Shear, of course, which is arguably the best kick in the entire game for Mythic Plus. Having one ranged kick in your group is useful to overcome any positional limitations for melee, or even for grouping up caster mobs like on the Bromag fight in Uldaman, where the Geomancers can be pulled into the group with a ranged interrupt. During fortified weeks, having multiple kicks in your group is even more vital since trash is obviously more deadly. Giving your group additional wipe coverage is a no-brainer here. Even if someone misses their kick, there's enough backup to compensate. And on top of interrupts, every group should also have multiple stops or micro CCs in order to deal with spells that can't be kicked normally or to cover any additional casts in case everyone's kick is on cooldown. Stops come in different forms, including stuns, AoE disorients, and knock effects. And there are obviously more CC categories, but these three in particular are the most ubiquitous. AoE stops are quite effective for dense trash pulls where multiple mobs have uninterruptible mechanics. Take for instance the fighter mobs on the beach part of Brackenhide Hollow. There's often two to three fighters per pull, and they'll periodically fixate on players which can't really be dealt with using single target stops alone. Having a mix of both single target and AoE CC is ideal for consistent coverage against every trash pack, not just to stop multiple casts, but even to provide the tank with some breathing room if it's needed. Enhancement Shamans are a great example of a class with great AoE CC, which includes Sundering, Thunderstorm, and Capacitor Totem. If you play Enhance or any other class with multiple stops, you should definitely take advantage of it as these tools are insanely effective for minimizing wipes. And speaking of preventing wipes, combat reses are extremely helpful on that end, and we're including them as a core tool you should have in every M Plus group. Full wipes are the bane of any run, whether it's in a pug or in a pre-made, and at any time are enough to brick a run. Having a combat or a battle res is one of the most effective tools for preventing a full wipe, especially when it's the tank who has aggro on the floor boss. Mythic dungeons, they're all about inertia after all, so being able to keep up momentum instantly with a combat res is vital, no matter who it's on. There are four classes that can provide battle reses on other players. The shortlist includes DKs, Druids, Paladins, and Warlocks. 
Now, technically, every shaman spec can res themselves too, and resto shamans even have a janky combat res totem, but we're not counting these as true battle res mechanics. And for slightly different reasons, we're also not including the engineering tinker res, unless you like to gamble, of course. Now, in any case, having at least one combat res mechanic is ideal. But if we really want to min-max, it's optimal if they come from ranged DPS and even healers, and generally not the tank since their resource requirements can take away from survivability. Now we have three out of four essential tools needed for Mythic Dungeons, and that leaves one more. And this one's a bit controversial here, and some of you might already have guessed what it is. But if not, it's Bloodlust. Some players might argue that Bloodlust isn't actually needed for Mythic Plus. I mean, after all, if you do the math, the additional haste gained on average across the entire run really isn't actually that meaningful. While this might be true, the power increase Bloodlust provides during its brief windows is what truly matters. Lust makes those difficult pressure points much more manageable. And now, even though it might only be pressed a handful of times every dungeon, it not only helps increase scoreboard damage, but also minimize deaths. There are four major lust effects in the game, coming from shamans, mages, and evokers, which are all meta classes currently. Hunters also have their own similar effect, but are generally considered off meta in higher keys. We should also note that there are leather working drums that can also provide a weaker bloodlust effect, which isn't exactly ideal, but definitely worth bringing if you don't have coverage from the classes that we just mentioned. And with that, we have the base of our Mythic Plus group. No matter what, we'll need multiple interrupts, ideally a mix of melee and ranged, then we'll need some stops, both single target and AoE. Following this, it will be immensely helpful to have a battle res to prevent full wipes. And finally, a dedicated Bloodlust class if possible. Now the last two can be optional, but playing without a battle res or lust is needlessly risky if it can be avoided. Now we have to add our next layer. This is where we'll include some accessories here. Aiming to gather three additional tools, and while these are not as critical as our core, they will make every dungeon much easier. But before we move on, we have a huge disclaimer here. The following three mechanics are definitely not required in Mythic Plus, especially for casual, lower-level keys. So, when forming groups, simply take the following information into consideration and avoid gatekeeping players just because they don't have one of these fancy tools. With that out of the way, it's very helpful to get additional dispel coverage coming from our DPS and even our tank, especially against poisons, and diseases. The dungeon rotation this season includes loads of powerful disease effects, so having a paladin, priest, monk, or even an evoker in the group can help give you some much needed coverage in various dungeons. Poisons are also quite strong this season, and can be removed by druids, evokers, monks, paladins, and even shamans. On a fight like Naraxis, where there's a massive group-wide poison, shamans get extra value for the ability to AoE dispel Toxic Wretch off the entire group. In fact, the strength of diseases and poisons are why dwarves are so powerful, since you can counter entire mechanics with Stone Form, the most gigachad racial in all of Mythic+. Plus. And speaking of countering mechanics, Mass Dispel deserves its own shout out here. Just like having additional disease and poison removals can make runs more manageable, Mass Dispel is borderline required for pushing the highest keys. Dungeons like Uldaman and Halls of Infusion have some deadly group-wide magic debuffs, which can give healers trouble due to the 8 second cooldown on Magic Dispel. But with MD, it's almost like these mechanics just don't even exist. And on top of having additional dispel coverage, it's also helpful to have off healing because, let's face it, there's some nasty healing checks this season, and being able to help out your healer by any means necessary is a huge plus. And there's obviously a bunch of different specs that can off heal, but the most efficient form of off healing comes from passive sources. Abilities like Nature's Vigil, Ancestral Guidance, and Vampiric Embrace are all very convenient since they don't require DPS to stop their damage in order to heal. Because of this feature, it's no wonder that Shadow Priests and Guardian Druids have been quite popular at the high end of the ladder. Does having off-healing mean you're going to automatically time every run? 
Of course not. And in order to be diligent, you should still fall back on any self-healing options even if your team is stacked with OP hybrids. This also means stocking up on healing potions which you should have no matter what regardless of your team comp and being quick to use health stones when you dip super low on HP. Again, anything you can do to assist your healer will be appreciated. The last accessory you should look out for when forming groups is true crowd control. Now this is different than the micro CC that we talked about earlier when it comes to mob control. True CC includes spells that allow you to bypass certain trash packs, like Imprison or Sap for instance, since they won't draw aggro from enemy mobs. True CC also includes any form of long-lasting crowd control that can help deal with incorporeal, which include effects like Hex, Polymorph, Sleepwalk, and so on. Outside of incorporeal and for saving time on very specific trash packs, having True CC isn't 100% necessary. We're far past the days of individually marking mobs for CC pre-pull, and instead, the goal is to blast packs in huge groups, saving markers for interrupts and stops. Okay, at this point, we've built on our core composition, and ideally, we'll want multiple dispel sources. Then, either active or passive off-healing, and finally, some forms of true CC, especially to help out with incorporeal. Once again, be sure to build groups starting with the core, and if we can manage to get any of the tools that we just mentioned, then our comp will be in great shape. Everything beyond this point is honestly just extra credit, so now let's go over some of the additional quality of life improvements we can consider when we're forming our groups. First up, it's always nice to have buffs. Mark of the Wild, Power Word Fortitude, Arcane Intellect, and Devotion Aura are all super helpful, but definitely not required. Now, out of all these buffs, Mark of the Wild is arguably the strongest since it gives the best of both worlds, damage and healing increases, and some small DR. Again, at this point, everything is just extra credit, so if we have one or more of these buffs, great. If not, it's honestly no big deal. The same can be said for the two major damage debuffs in the game as well. The first is Chaos Brand from Demon Hunters, which is applied any time a DH attacks a mob and provides a 5% magic damage increase to the target. Virtually every class in the game can benefit from this debuff, including many melee DPS, since some melee attacks deal pure spell damage. Some specs that can't really benefit from Chaos Brand include Outlaw Rogues, Feral Druids, Windwalker Monks, and Fury Warriors, who primarily deal physical damage. Luckily, Monks are able to provide some coverage on that end with Mystic Touch, which is their answer to Chaos Brand, adding a 5% increase to physical damage with an automatically applied debuff. Having these smaller damage increases is obviously nice, and some of you might be wondering about a much larger damage increase that we haven't even mentioned yet. And of course, it's everyone's favorite buff, Power Infusion. Don't get us wrong, PI is really strong, but not 100% necessary for timing keys. The damage increase it provides is pretty significant for a select few specs, including Devastation Evokers, Balanced Druids, Demo Warlocks, Fire Mages, and Frost DK, among others. Other specs that are less reliant on haste won't benefit as much from this external buff. Having a Priest in your group will not only give you PI, but will also give you Mind Soothe, which is another great tool to have. This single ability allows for greater flexibility with roots and can save a bunch of time by being able to skip troublesome, inefficient packs. Again, at this point, we're just looking for extra credit, and Mind Soothe definitely fits that description. Performing a similar role is Shroud of Concealment for Rogues, and as of the latest patch, Mass Invisibility for Mage, which are both designed purely to increase efficiency, and just like Mind Soothe, these are nice abilities to have in your group, but they're certainly not required. And having either one of these in your group on top of Mind Soothe can be a bit redundant, especially considering invisibility pots can perform a similar function to both abilities. Finally, for even more extra credit on the defensive end, we might want to consider having some strong AoE externals coming from a source other than our healer. Abilities like Rallying Cry or Zephyr are useful to have more wipe insurance being able to survive pressure points is the number one way to time a run, so might as well make sure you have multiple ways to make sure your group doesn't die. 
We're also going to throw Augmentation Evokers into the Extra Credit category as well, due to their wide array of buffs that can be beneficial to any group, including damage reductions, main stat modifiers, and even speed increases, just to name a few. We know Augmentation has been a bit controversial, but unless you're pushing the highest keys, it's by no means necessary for most groups. At this point, we've built our entire Mythic Plus group pyramid. We started with our core, which includes the foundational tools that we'll want in our group no matter what. As a group leader, avoid playing without any of these ability types whenever possible, especially for higher keys. Beyond this point, we can help fill out our group with some accessories which aren't 100% necessary, but definitely recommended. And finally, add flavor to your composition with some of the extra credit abilities we covered in the miscellaneous section. The higher you can build this pyramid, the stronger your composition will be, and for pushing the highest keys, you'll want the most coverage possible. If you spent any time looking at the leaderboards, you might have noticed that there is a ton of overlap in group composition. This is no accident. Right now, Holy Paladins are able to provide almost everything in our core category, including a melee interrupt, both single target and AoE stops, and these days, even a battle res. They're able to provide all of this tech as a healer of all things, with Bloodlust being their only missing piece. Well, at least for now. At this point, it should be obvious why Holy Paladins are in high demand for higher keys, since they simply offer tons of value in one complete package. Now, does this mean you absolutely need a Holy Paladin in your group? Absolutely not. Most classes are able to provide at least two elements of our core, which simply means filling any gaps before adding any other accessories. Group comp matters the most when it comes to higher keys, and generally speaking, there are only a handful of comps that can truly handle the highest level mythic dungeons. That's why when you watch the MDI or the Great Push, you tend to see the same specs represented time and time again, simply because they tend to offer the most coverage. So, as a group leader, don't ignore a class just because it isn't exactly the most meta, but try and make sure your group is well-rounded, with the greatest variety of answers to every dungeon's toughest problems. All right, guys, between now and the next patch, there's certainly a lot that can change. So be sure to subscribe to our channel to get instantly notified when we upload a new video. And while you're at it, let us know in the comments below what videos we should make next. If you have any great ideas, we'd like to hear about them. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.